I'm Mason Mount. You're listening to the London is Blue podcast. All right, next one. Can we be successful with Conte and Jorginho? So Aerith Muggle asking, do you think we can be successful long-term with the Jorginho Conte 2 at the base? Personally, every time I see Conte marauding upfield, and I'm not sure we have anyone adequately screening our back four, I get a really uncomfortable knot in my stomach. Nick, look, Angola Conte can cover the entire earth on his own. But like Shane says here, his concern is what happens when he gets caught upfield and we get countered. I mean, Jorginho is not the best defender. We know that. Yeah, it, it was it was why when we were talking about the formation yesterday, Dan, that I was pretty sure that we were playing a 4-3-3 based on how far upfield Angola was. Uh, I think this is this still has a lot of work to do, Aerith Muggle. I, I you know, to me, I you know, I still truly believe that Angola Conte is a world class central defensive midfielder, that he can be a destroyer, that he can sit back, that he can protect a back four. Uh, So far, we haven't really seen him do that, to be fair. We've seen him much further upfield. We've seen him contributing to the attack and winning the ball higher up the pitch. But um, just the way we played in a 4-3-3 versus the way we play in a 4-2-3-1, right now it seems to me like a 4-3-3 might be the way to get a couple results under our belt. And um, if that's the case, then I feel a lot better better um that we have at least three midfielders doing a lot of good work um i don't know how you feel though dan i feel like i am more concerned about the instruction than the formation i mean i think we are getting into a lot of this formation analysis around four two three one versus four three three or when it goes into being a four two four when we have you know where we're going at attack versus potentially dropping to like a, a five occasionally when we don't or we are going to a four four two when we don't have it because we're pressing the striker like to me the more important thing is what are the instructions we're, we're giving the players and if Conte has the instruction to be a, a full box to box midfielder that's where maybe the concern for me is of whomever has to be partnered next to him has to also be someone who is an extremely capable box box midfielder and this is where you were excited maybe that bakayoko again earlier in the preseason there was the hope that maybe the two of them together would absolutely give you this dominant force that would lock it down but that's not what's happening i think where i might be excited and i might be leading into the next question a little too much brandon but Do someone it. like Loftus Cheek partnering with Ngolo Kante, you know, as a two is way more exciting to me because they're going to give you the ability to really win the ball, turn it over, play it forward, but also move back quickly enough and kind of move in tandem to take care of business. Well, yeah, I think that's where we're kind of leading. So Chase asking when Ruben Loftus Cheek come, comes back, what's the best midfield combo? Three. Right? Midfield three? Are you good with that? Yeah, I think so. I, I'd almost you know, I think I think the battle when Ruben comes back is not necessarily with, you know, Kovacic and Jorginho, because I think he just kinda adds to that group. I think it almost solidifies we play a four three three based on his uh contributions last year in the left side of that three. Uh, and I think the battle really then becomes your Barkley, your Callum, your Pulisic, you know, the, the front three right now as, as they're operating, um, and Pedro and William and all these guys, I think it, it really shores up the a really small amount of opportunities for, for quite a few of those guys, because when he's on and he scored 10 goals last year and, and basically a half of a season with, you know, all the injuries he had, you have to put him in the team. I just we don't have anyone else like him, Dan, and I don't personally see him as a as a pivot guy. Um, I don't I don't know if he tracks back well enough. I don't know if I agree with that. I think he, some of the runs that he kind of was able to pull back and play forward is probably one of the best technical dribblers of the ball on our team currently. Um, yeah, I mean, he was basically number two behind Hazard last season in terms of just being able to finesse the ball around players. And at 6'4", just is stupid that he should be able to have that level of finesse. But, yeah, I mean, I think 
you have to figure out how do you get your best players on the pitch. And if you start kind of going by a hierarchical standing and say like Ruben Loftus Cheek is a top you know ten player, then you know or top three player, then who else are we going to kind of maybe make way for him? And I think that's where the conversation is going. Brandon is if you know Ruben Loftus Cheeks come in, like, comes in, who is potentially going to miss out? And I think you know it could be someone like Pulisic, it could be someone like an extra attacker, you know maybe you know, and you know crazily enough, I mean Conte tried it. He was trying Ruben in a top two. Like, is it potentially an option for Ruben to kind of play like a shadow striker, play as a, you know, if we play a, a four, um, four, four, one, or, uh, you know, with the, the one striker and then Ruben right behind him, I mean, that's an option too. Four, four, one, one. Yeah. You know, I, look, Ruben's a box to box guy. He is great when he's running at people. Um, to be fair, though, we've seen him have some nasty turns in the midfield and stuff like that with pressure on his back. Um, but, you know, if you, I, I still like the 4 3 3 with him in there because he can cover so much ground, especially Ingola Conte can cover so much ground. You know, and then you're leaving, I think, Kovacic and Jorginho to fight out for that holding spot. If you still play three across the front, depending on how you do it, um, you can almost play the false nine. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. I still like the, the 4 3 3 situation with him in it. And, um, I, I want him to run. I want him to run at people. I want him to run back, destroy people. I want him to do what he does, uh, and that's exactly it. So yeah, like when, when he's healthy, the two players that are under the most threat from his return are Ross Barkley and Mason Mount, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and it's not because neither one of them are good enough. It's just that Ruben, uh, especially with a lack of height on this team, you know. You know, besides our striker, he just adds something on set pieces that we don't we don't currently have with those guys, and and also is just you know again like Dan said, a wonderful dribbler of the ball. I think a really great passer of the ball, and was improving last year before he got fucking hurt again. Um, and then you know chipped in some really good goals. He started to just make that kind of left side of the eighteen yard box shot his. Um, and, and a couple, you know, the one against Brighton, Dan was unstoppable. So, uh, you know, if he's going to do that and he's going to contribute goals and he's going to, you know, be a, a uh, you know, steal uh, type of guy in the midfielder, you know, in the midfield, he's, he's in for me. Yeah, I would rather Frank Lampard have selection headaches than not have, uh, be looking at his roster and thinking there's not enough players there. Amen.